History is a lie. Majority of the stuff that we are taught in school is a lie. Because when you start to put two and two together, shit ain't adding up. So you mean to tell me that 18th century settlers who rode around in stuff like this, who lived in houses like this, I mean, it's not a bad house, but it's not like fucking amazing. But you mean to tell me these are the same kind of people that built structures like this? That doesn't make sense to me. The architecture is not matching up. This cathedral is called Notre Dame. I hope I pronounced that correctly. But it's located in Paris, France. And this, this right here was built in 1163. But you're gonna tell me that in the 1700s, they were living in this. When they could build stuff like that, they didn't build that. Who built it? Now, you're gonna look at this and be like, what the fuck is that? I'll tell you what it is. This is a cavity magnetron. This thing is basically a high powered vacuum tube that generates microwaves. Everybody got this in their house, okay? All the microwaves have magnetrons in them. The microwaves that it emits can act as a source of free energy. Free energy. Now, this is a cathedral window and this is the magnetron. Do you see the similarities? Boom. Notice how they put the stained glass there. When you close off the vacuum, it no longer functions. It no longer emits that free energy. And these were everywhere. Boom. Boom. And you mean to tell me that the people that put these there didn't know their purpose and what they did that for? And the center of the magnetron is called a cathode. What does that word sound like? Cathode sounds like cathedral. They are corrupting the truth with lies. Whoever built this shit, they knew that these structures harvested, generated, and distributed free energy. Now look at this. The antennas used to harvest the energy. Boom. This is located all over the world. This means that at one point in time, humans were a unified civilization. They all knew something. They all knew how to do this. It reminds me of the Tower of Babel story in the Bible when all of the humans came together to build a structure to reach the heavens. And God didn't like that, so he destroyed the tower and divided everyone, making them speak different languages so that they couldn't do this again as a unified civilization. You see how the ether energy is being harvested into the domed resonator? These structures are located all over the world. Look at that, the domed resonator and the antenna. Now you see how these copper coils are able to generate this light, this energy? This is what columns were used for in the structures to help generate that energy. And we see that with the architecture from that time. Boom! Now y'all probably don't know shit about computers, but this is a motherboard. This is located inside the computer and look what it looks like. It resembles cities. Our earth is just a giant power grid. It's meant to distribute the free energy. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. Y'all ever been on YouTube and seen the videos like this where they play like a specific frequency to influence your mood and your behavior and your body? And for those of you that don't know what hurts are, the type of frequency and there's many different hurts that can assist with many different things like here is the hurts for manifesting 528 hertz there's a hertz for healing 174 hertz okay now look this is what a star looks like through a telescope what does it resemble yeah water news flash water can be manipulated with sound frequencies vibrations in this video right here, I was talking about how the earth is a giant power grid and how many of the structures from the past, such as the cathedrals, were harvesting, generating, and distributing this energy. There was a study done in one of these cathedrals where the researcher was testing to see how the water reacted to the silence of the cathedral. And even in fucking silence, the sound changed the molecular structure of the water, creating these images which mysteriously resemble the windows in the cathedrals. This is why a lot of cathedrals have bells. The vibration of the bells influences the water around it. And you know what else was able to influence the molecular structure of water? Organs. Now there was a study done by a man named Masaru Emoto. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. But he experimented with water, exposing it to music and different words. Like for example, when he told it, thank you, it turned into that. But when he said things like, you make me sick, it turned into that. So water can be manipulated based off of the vibrations around it. Hence why we have to raise our vibrations, people. 
Now this over here is what the cities used to look like in the past. Who created this shit? Whoever did, they knew what the fuck they was doing. There were literally cities all around our realm in this star structure with water surrounding it. Boom, a boom, boom, a boom. Hello. Like they were doing this all over the world. That has to mean something. But whatever happened, that information is now lost amongst humans. As you can see, the structures are now drained of that water, like desert dry. Somebody or something doesn't want us to do what we were able to do back then. These cathedral windows were specifically designed. They amplified the sounds of the bells, of the organs, which were there to provide a certain frequency for the city around it. Frequencies of good health or prosperity. Can you see now that they were more advanced than us? They understood as above, so below. They studied the water above the firmament to understand the realm that we lived in and how to maximize it. Oh my God, you guys are here. I'm so excited to share this with you. So this book right here was written in 1670 and it was basically like an introduction to globes. So the book states many times that the globe is not what we've been taught, but if we try hard, we can adopt it into our current knowledge. The author basically threatens that if you don't, you won't know anything about trigonometry or land navigation. Now get this, the author supports his claims by reflecting on the fact that people thought California was a part of North America when really it's an island. So he's saying basically, believe me, the world is a globe because California is an island. Oh my God. So I got curious. I was like, let me see some maps from this time period. And Lord and behold, they got California as an island. Boom, there goes another one. And again, and another one, can't make this up. Every single map pre-1800s depicts California as an island. Why? How is it that the people from Asia, Spain, and England all made the same unique mistake of making California an island? So I look a little closer at California and it says Carolinas. Carolina is a female name of German origin that means free slash beautiful woman. Let's run that back. The name ultimately comes from Germanic word Carla, who means free woman. Let's get deeper, y'all. In Las Sergas, Calafia was described as a black warrior queen who ruled the mythical island of California. The island was inhibited only by black women who lived like Amazon warriors. Um, what? California could have possibly been ruled by black women? Montalvo, who is the author of that book, is said to have gotten a book that mentions Queen Calafia and her black Amazon warriors. So therefore he was not the original author. It must be older than the day it was published in 1510. Is this some ancient history we don't know about? This picture is showing men from Spain arriving to, I guess the California island full of black Amazon warriors. Why would they add Carolinas if it was not inspired by historical events? Is this really a myth or a legend or are they just not telling us something? because these myths and legends collaborate well with these old maps and real events. And you can pause this and read this yourself, but African skulls have been found in the Americas. So like, are we Native Americans? And for those of you that think the author made a mistake by calling those women black, Europeans, Americans, Spaniards never mistook American Indians for Negro Africans. They always referred to the blacks of the Negro African type as Moors, blacks, or Ethiopians. It wasn't a mistake. But anyways, back to, you know, this book. If they will lie about who the true Native Americans are, they will lie about the earth being flat.